In today's video, we're going to be diving into a pattern that is relatively snowy considering how warm the beginning of March was. We have a snowstorm coming within 24 hours, and now models are keying in on an even more major and widespread snow event happening potentially within the next 10 days. So we're going to be diving into that as well as severe weather events and other storms that we have coming in. Let's take a look here at the European model, and this one's going to be surprising. It has a lot of cold air coming in later on, so stay tuned for that. Our GFS model that we're going to take a look at later on is where we're going to see uh, some of that snowfall begin again in about 10 or so days. Let's take a look here at the, the afternoon for tomorrow. I guess we'll look at the overnight because this is when we have our first snow event. We see a low over southern New England causing snowfall throughout the mountainous northeast for portions of the Adirondack Mountains, Green Mountains, White Mountains, Northern Maine, even the Catskills getting involved. And once we see this storm uh, kind of move out, what we see is that snowfall with this cold uh, air that really gets allowed to move in. We see some light to moderate snowfall continue for Pennsylvania, New York, West Virginia here. So expect potential snow squalls and snow showers after this event is all, is all said and done. Let's take this towards Monday afternoon, and this is when things are going to quiet down here in the east. We don't see any activity basically left over. But for the northwest, we do see some more light storminess with some snowfall for the higher elevations and some rainfall in those lower elevation areas and more coastal regions. By the time we're reaching Tuesday afternoon, what we see is that warm air is really, really being uh, allowed to just really form here in the central and eastern states. And this is mostly due to the activity out west and the trough that is developing at this point. Uh, this basically causes all this warm air that would be over the southwest to pour into the central and the eastern states. By the time we're reaching Wednesday afternoon, we see a low forming near Texas and Oklahoma. We see snowfall on the back end of things, and we're going to begin to see some thunderstorms develop with this one. Uh, we see the warm front boundary really, really getting going here with some rainfall showers along this, potentially a crack of thunder or two in there as well. And by Thursday afternoon, we do get that kind of uh, cold front quadrant in here where this cold front is going to want to try to swing through and develop. Uh, we see a lot of gulf moisture and warmth allowed into this area. And this is going to cause thunderstorm activity for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and then Mississippi and Alabama there. By Friday, we see this all kind of moves eastward. And we again have that warm front, cold front dynamic going on here along this low that's now over Indiana. So expect potential thunderstorms, especially in this area, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, into Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and even into Georgia there by Friday. And then by Saturday, what we see is that it's going to be mostly for the deeper south here. This corridor here is where I'd say the best chance of thunderstorms are Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, and into North Carolina. Meanwhile, look at this ridge developing out west. We have a really, really strong signal at a positive PNA coming in. And this does the opposite of what we saw a minute ago with, with that trough. When we get a ridge out west, we see the cold air basically pour into the central and the eastern states. And we're beginning to see that take place there. And by Sunday, we have this full-blown trough moving into the east. Still a lot of precipitation in the deeper south and the southeast. But cold air is on the way. And by Monday here, we see it's digged even deeper. We see this positive PNA is getting even more intense here along the west. So this cold air is pouring well south towards Oklahoma and Arkansas. And in the east, it's well into the mid-Atlantic at this point. By the time we're reaching Tuesday, we see it gets even colder and even more east-centered. The heart of that trough being located over the Great Lakes about. And we see really, really cold compared to normal conditions for the entire eastern states as we're approaching the 20th time frame. The GFS model, let's just dive through it. We see the same things basically happening here. A lot of precipitation in the deep south. We get that trough moving in for Sunday into Monday. Uh, another kind of round of it. But this is when things get interesting here, guys. By the time we're reaching Tuesday into Wednesday, that's going to be the 19th into the 20th. We have 1,001 millibar low pressure center over the Delmarva. And we're seeing moderate to heavy snowfall developing here for a lot of the Appalachian mountain range from the southeast into the mid-Atlantic and even into the northeast. Again, much more widespread this time around. It really drops in pressure once it gets offshore here, which is really, really common. 993 millibar low pressure center there offshore of New Jersey 
and this would be a heavy, heavy snowfall event for Pennsylvania up through New York and the rest of New England, a very late season one, but not anything too crazy. Late March is still a wintry month. And look at this, it's diving all the way down to a 983 millibar low pressure center by time of reaching about 10 p.m. there, or 8 to 10 p.m. I would say on Wednesday evening on the 20th. Really, really heavy snowfall for southern New England. This would definitely drop a significant amount of snowfall if that did occur. And look at this, we even have more activity moving eastward. Uh, by time we're approaching the 25th, as we still have a bit of a ridge here, nothing as intense as what we saw, but a positive PNA nevertheless. And some of this cold is looking to take aim at the north central and northeastern states. But because this area is cold up here in the northwest, uh, this trough ends up being a lot more flat, as you can see. So impacting more like the northern plains, upper Midwest and Great Lakes, and then the northeast is kind of the trend there. Total precipitation, we have a lot expected out for the northwest. Also the deeper south into the northeast here where we have a lot of storm systems moving through this area and up the coast. And that is what is causing all of this. Total snowfall in the European model, we do have pretty sizable amounts for the Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. Obviously a ton out west. But it's really the GFS model that I want to dive into because look at this. We have a lot out west. Again, no surprise there. Once we move into kind of the Great Lakes area here, uh, or let's take another view. These north central ones are a little bit rough. Uh, let's see here. I know I'm jumping all over the place here. This is a good one, Ohio Valley. And what we see is a 10 inch plus amounts here for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Northern Iowa, uh, into Wisconsin, both peninsulas of Michigan there. So a ton of snowfall in the North Central states. But it's really the Northeast that's the main event here on the GFS model. We're seeing 10 inches plus widespread throughout West Virginia, up through Pennsylvania, into New York, and then the entirety of New England, basically seeing 10 inches plus, even two to three feet here for the mountainous areas of the Adirondacks, Catskills, Green Mountains, White Mountains, and into the northern areas of Maine. Uh, and really, overall, this would be a very, very widespread snow event, obviously, if we did see anything close to this. I think that this is a little bit high, obviously, and it is in the long range, so we're going to take it with a grain of salt. But certainly interesting to see these models trending at major snowstorms in the long range. We've been eyeballing potential colder times and, and, you know, snowier times for the later portion of March, but this certainly exceeds what I was ever really expecting. We're going to watch this model and all these models daily to keep track of all these potential snowfall events with you guys. The temperature pattern, we're looking at the European model, actually, because we're warmer, and this is that kind of midweek warm. Look at Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very, very warm in the east. We're talking 70s and 80s for a lot of folks, but look at this cold that pours in starting on Sunday evening on the 17th into Monday, and then even into Tuesday. Look at this deep cold that is reaching the entirety of the east. These greens are 10 to 15 degrees below what your average is. Uh, keep in mind, we've been above average, so you're going to see an even higher contrast between what we've been seeing and what we're expecting to see. You can expect a contrast of potentially 15 to 25 degrees colder than what things have been, which is extremely significant, obviously, and something that you will walk outside and literally feel. So it's going to be extremely impactful in that regard. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Again, we're going to continue to track both the European and GFS models over the coming days and weeks. So keep that in mind as we continue to move into a very interesting pattern as we transition out of winter and into spring. Winter does not seem to be over, though. That's the trend here. So be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.